Good morning, cultists. Welcome back to another Unbalanced Breakfast with Cthulhu Loops. Alright, so full disclosure, in between episodes, I got a whole bunch of mods. Um, the first one being a mod that actually lets me unlock Steam achievements whilst having mods. Um, so I guess that's a big plus. Um, and the other mods that I got are basically just for convenience. For example, I got a mod that if I right click one of our characters, it immediately opens up the examine window and I can also use a hold a hotkey down and then press on unchain. That lets me unchain and rechain everyone at the same time. That way I don't have to like, you know, go through each character and all that shit. Um, another mod that I got um, that you might notice is increased run speed and it's, it's only be in between, um, this is only outside of combat. It won't actually affect anything in combat and I figure this will cut down on some of the uh, travel time that we have in episodes and um, so that way we can get into the um, meaty stuff. Another mod that I got was um, you might have noticed that there's no number underneath his spirit vision. It's now permanent. So uh, I think the mod uh, sets the turn um, count or the uh, the, dur the turn uh, duration to a 99 turns which I think makes this permanent. So um, you know big plus there. I guess we might as well give it to everyone then. Come on, Fane. Don't want to be left out? Fantastic. Alright, um... A rather significant mod that I got was actually the, uh... Um... It provides a hotkey that you can press to, uh... Reset the vendor's stock whenever you're talking to them and shit. So that way I can just... Cycle through their gear rather than having to wait until we level up or wait an hour before they restock their... Uh, stuff and it also clears out the soul uh, shit that you sold to them so it doesn't uh, clutter up their crap so much so I actually spent a couple of hours going through um, all the vendors um, and selling all our extraneous crap I think we had a, at one point we had like 30,000 gold and now we're down to <laughs> um, 3600 <laughs> which is uh, abysmal but uh, it did allow us to get a whole bunch of uh, awesome gear, which I think should be um, should make a big difference, possibly. Um, but yeah, um, sorry. One cosmetic mod that I got was the mod to remove all the weird muscle striations and whatnot in female elves. It just kind of disturbed me for whatever reason, um, so I got rid of that. And I think that's about it. I'll be sure to update the descriptions of the videos to include all the mods that I'm using. Um, but again, these are just like cosmetic and like, uh, I feel like, um, what's it? Cosmetic and convenience mods. So nothing that actually affects uh, gameplay too much. Except for maybe the mod that uh, lets me um, resurrect people by using bedrolls rather than using these fucking um, uh, resurrection scrolls. So that way I don't feel as bad about uh, people dying in our team, right? Maybe. <laughs> I also leveled up our people, um, I bought them some books and whatnot as well, so yeah, that's all the housekeeping stuff that I have to announce. Alright, so uh, in our last episode, we ended things off after another Royal Rumble with a bunch of Void Woken, sorry, Voidlings, as well as some Magisters who decided to attack me despite the fact that I uh, saved their asses and shit, but uh, yeah. Gremory, talk to Holding me. his arms across his chest, the Magister stares at you with baleful eyes. One by one, he points at the dead Voidwoken, the dead Magisters, the dead Silent Watchers. Then, he points at you. If you're pointing at all the dead things, you are correct, because Fabrosi is, in fact, undead. Your end comes, Sorcerer. Just as it came for them, and for me. Friedemann guided the excavation rightly. Soon, Dallas will use the Aetirun on you. And then you will be the sorcerer no longer. Um, is any of that supposed to mean anything to me? Try to engage him in conversation, A. Tyrion, what's he talking about? He says nothing, only twists his lip bitterly as he echoes, pointing at the dead. Pointing at the dead, then pointing at you. Again, thank you for noticing that I'm undead, that's very nice of you. Um, here. You don't want to talk? Here's how we deal with you, jackass. Come on. Come on. Fucking get in there, Fabrosi. Don't do this to me. I'm threatening him. 
There we go. What do you think about that, Gremory? Your parents never loved you. All right, who's this? The spirit of a black ring sensate. Sensate, as in you're from the Sensate's Guild in uh, Planescape Torment? The spirit's memory, in its madness, dances in your mind. You are a Sensate, deaf and mute, but gifted with an unnatural ability. Dallas seeks you out and brings you here into the darkness. When the blindfold falls, Dallas bids you find and free a secret power. You close your eyes and you feel the presence of a hidden truth. You point at it and open your eyes. You are pointing at Dallas. The hammer calmly bids you try again, then steps back into the shadows. You close your eyes once more. Now the vault before you sings to you. You raise your hand to it. It opens to your touch. From the vault, you take a sword. It's weightless, yet it feels extremely powerful. More powerful even than Dallas herself, and yet fragile. A hand falls upon your shoulder. A blade crosses your throat. Blood pours. Dallas whispers, good girl. And then all goes quickly dark. That's why there's that age-old saying, never trust someone named Dallas. Aetirin. What an incredible discovery. Uh, for Rosie, is the Aetirin supposed to mean something? Come on, man. You can't just withhold this information from me. Alright, what is this thing? Um, narrator? Hello? Did you forget to read this line? Did they not pay you for this one single line? Okay. The pedestal seems empty, as if it once supported something, something powerful. You surmise that this is the, this was the once, uh, this was once the resting place of the Aetirin until it was torn free and borne away. If this is what Dallas was looking for, then she has claimed her prize. This must be where the Magisters found the Aetirin. It's also where they found death. At my hands, which was quite epic. Alright, uh, what's down this area? Hey, there's a rat. I was looking for that rat. A little rat squeaks up at you inquisitively. Beady little eyes full of something approximating intelligence. Are you a poet? Do you know it? Do I show it? Um, definitely not. I write a rhyme in my spare time. It's about a bird. But I need a word. Um, okay. Say his head is furred. Say a cat just purred. Say that he's a nerd. Say your heart is stirred. Say that's just absurd. Leave without a word. Ha <laughs> ha. Even this is a rhyme. Nice. Uh, bird. Um, I guess the closest relation would be a cat. You know, a cat sees a bird and purrs because he wants to eat the uh, bird, right? Or the bird wants to eat the cat. He eyes you shrewdly, then sniffs with judgment. Not what I was looking for. Now I'll bid you good day. Boar. You ass hat. All right, fine. Can I talk to you again? Can I give you another suggestion? Or are we locked out of that forever? Squeaks up at you inquisitively. Beady little eye. Are you a poet? I write a rhyme. Oh. In my okay, good. Say his head is furred. He eyes you. Sh not what I. Okay, we failed. The little rat. Are you a I write a rhyme. He's a nerd. He eyes not. The Stop moving. Are you I write a rhyme. Say your heart is he stirred. Not. Oh no no, Forbosi! Don't kill him. There's no need to kill him. No, we're just. Rat, squeak. Are you a I write a rhyme. Say this, Jeff's absurd. You. No. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Little rat, squeak. Are you a I write a rhyme. Leave rhyme. without a word. Fuck. Okay, that's not it. Maybe we need to read a book on poetry or something and then come back to him afterwards. Anything down there? What's in this room? It's locked. We might need to un uh, lock pick it, but first. Okay, apparently we actually had a key. Nice. Got a shovel and a journal. Journal? I don't like it here. Don't like it. Don't like it at all. There's something humming. Some fell thing. Something that claws around at the edges of my senses. Worming its way in. Today I saw a glowing blue light and it spoke to me. I turned to tell my friend and he was not but glowing light too. And when I screamed he laughed a laugh a laugh a laugh so hollow and black I thought it was the end. I wish it were the end. Great. Apparently that updated our midnight oil quest. Um, sure. I guess we'll take it, just in case. Chest. Got nether swap, which unfortunately we already uh, picked up for uh, Losa. Source orb. And an unidentified bow. Which, okay. Great, we'll just sell that too. And... How do we get in here? 
Is there maybe some sort of like hidden button or something? I've spotted something. Aha! Thank you, Sabil. Fantastic. All right, what do you hold in these hallowed secret halls of what you call it? Got ourselves a huge healing potion. Um, who here? Okay, you've already got one healing potion. Losa, why don't you take it then? And we'll give the gold to Fabrosi and medium finesse will go to uh, Sibio. Um, oh. Okay. Huh. I guess we can go up. Oh, right. I'm looking at the, uh, the mini map here. Ah, I see. That's how it's connected. So I guess we didn't even need to discover that. Uh, Sibio, you really don't have to... I guess she's just really wanted some cardio or she's showing off to people how quickly she can run like this okay that's great it's one of these things all right so in our last episode i believe um we touched one of these things and we supposedly got something it wasn't an armor piece it was actually a recipe and it was the recipe for the armor of the eternals that's what we got which is why i couldn't find it at all and the uh, text just kind of appeared and disappeared too quickly for me to uh, realize that. Alright, well, let's touch this thing. Um, but before we do, okay, what's with this mini-map here? Alright, never mind. Okay, let's touch it and hope that uh, it gives us something good. The stone relic pulls on your consciousness. You feel the tendrils of an ancient hunger trespassing within your soul, seeking something. Something you have. Source. Reach out. Your hand and touch the relic. As your fingertips brush the cool stone, you feel the depths of your being crack open. Your power flows from you into the relic, yet a reverse current flows back into you with a new power, a different power. Yeah, what do we get? A sharp electrical shock repels your hands from the stone and sends you staggering backwards. Wait, do we not get anything? What do we get? Can we at least get some of our source back, please? Thank you. Fane, can you try touching it, please? I stare at the artifact in amazement. Even though it's broken and suffering from centuries of neglect, there's no mistaking it for what it is. Eternal technology. Looking close, you see that it may be broken, but it's not dead. Its ancient hunger calls to you. It yearns for source. Back away from the relic. Ah, oh, damn. Did we mess it up because Fabrosi interacted with it first? All right, what's down here? Some fly Garrick? Fantastic, and what appears to be someone's dead-ass corpse. Fine. We'll talk to you, buddy. We'll burn your body while we're at it. Got a rusty key and some gold. Fantastic. She said, so I hurried and hurried some more. Tore me skin and muscles to shreds and got all but buried alive for the effort. Um, implore him to slow down. Who is the she? It sounds like he was being worked to the bone. What's the rush? Gesture joyfully at the scene. It's good when a magister gets what's coming to him. You're not in the mood for a chat, only for a source. Consume his. Um, he kind of sounds like Peterson from uh, the Red Dwarf series. You know, uh, Dave Lister's friend. Uh, who is this she? Dallas, who do you think? She's a smart cookie, but she's gotten careless since that new advisor's been twisting her ear. Faster, we're getting close. Easy for her to say. She might be called the hammer, but I never saw her walloping away at the rocks. <laughs> nice. No Dallas's impatience. What was she looking for? Um, hello? Do you, uh, are you communicating uh, to me via telepathy? I don't know what exactly it is, but I know it's called the Aetirin. Supposedly sucks the source out of anything and anyone for good. All I ever found were glowing gems and baubles, though. We'd shower the lot, and every time she'd look at that swaying shadow of a man at her side, and he'd shake his head like we'd brought them a pile of rubbish. Um, did you say his name, Riedemann? Or did you actually uh, skip that uh, name? Is it like Voldemort, you're not allowed to say it or something? If you ask me, he's a venomous cobra. The other reds are taken in by his eloquence, but all I hear are silver-plated lies. Alright, ask if any of these doodads they found included a tablet of some kind. Maybe. I honestly don't know. I'd bring her an arm full of shimmering rocks, and she'd whisper to Mr. Creepy Cloak about eternal this and stuff that. All right, step away. I'll just wait here then. Yeah, sure. I mean, if that's what you want to do with your life, sure. Rosie, there is a fly agaric mushroom down there that we uh, desperately need to pick up. So if you please, thank you very much. Now we go back 
Mexilosa. Fantastic. Alright, so I guess we should talk to this uh, chicken. And also there appears to be some poisoned bread. A parchment and a bottled water. Path, The path and the pilgrimage. What is this? It's nothing. And overseer's chest. Apparently we had a key for it. Uh, Fane, you can take that. We'll sell our, all this other crap. Thank you very much. And we also got a shocking arrow. Unfortunately, none of our uh, members use uh, bows or arrows. Or crossbows or bows. Canary? I tried to warn them, but would they listen? I know Canary, but I know from bad news when I see it. And what do I get? I'm dead in a cage. I would bugger them all. That's what you get for trying to help uh, magisters. I mean, not that, uh, you know, she had any choice in the matter. Okay, um, I don't believe we're quite done yet. I was about to head out, but I just realized that we didn't actually explore this area. Because, uh, the extent was, uh, Sibyl came here to kill the, uh, Silent Watcher, and that's about it. And we got a lot of experience points. Those are my people's tablets. Oh, nice. But first, we feast on, uh, poisoned bottles of wine. For a pansy, uh, for... For a fancy, for a fancy party that'll really knock him dead. Nice. <laughs> We've already got an identifying glass. We don't need to worry about that. Box is empty. Come on, guys. An eerie tablet. Ah, okay. The unusual tablet is marked on all sides with runic inscriptions that look like they were hacked into indecipherability with a chisel or similar instrument. As your fingertips trace these mutilated runes, your eyes flicker closed of their own accord. You see, nothingness. Vast, dark, and empty. Shout into the stillness. Keep silent. Pull your fingers back from the tablet surface. Keep silent? You sense something ancient watching you. Perusing you like a prison guard would watch a wayward ant scuttling across the floor of a cell. From within the endless emptiness, a voice hums into being and calls to you. God woken. Um, is that the void? You sense an interest within the cold voice addressing you. Beyond the interest, you sense fangs, voracious hunger, a bottomless appetite that no sustenance could ever sate. That has got to be the void. You see your life flash before your eyes, every memory flitting by like a moth's wings at a lantern. The vision reaches the present moment and diverges into multiple strands, impossible to keep track of. Your brain aches with the effort of trying to keep up with the intelligence as it sifts through your every potential future. You see salvation and destruction and every shade of existence in between. And all of a sudden, it's over. Blackness rises once more, just as it was at the start. Eternal darkness and you. An electric feeling pulses in your fingertips, and a force field of some kind pushes you away from the tablet. Great. I'm really not sure whether I passed or failed. Probably failed, Fabrosi. That's just the, how, the way that your life goes. Hey, Fane, can you please decipher what the Tablet of the Eternal said? I mean, they're your race, right? The tablet is marked on all sides with eternal... Right. As your fingertips trace these mutilated runes, your eyes flicker close... Reach out with your senses, all six of them. You see, you sense something ancient watching you from within the endless emptiness. Okay, so they actually know our name. You sense an interest within the cold voice addressing... You see your life flash before... Your brain aches, and all of a sudden... An electric feeling pulses in your finger. That's it? Wait. What? Fabrosi got living on the- sorry, a Fane got living on the edge? Well, you're not a necromancer, so that's not gonna be very helpful. Alright, maybe, um, maybe Fabrosi, since Fabrosi already had living on the edge, he didn't get it or something? Um... Let's see if maybe Losa might the be able to get something too. Is marked on all as your fingertips trace, you sent from with- you sent- you- your- and all of it, an electric fe- Nothing. Sibyl? The unusual t as your fingertips trace these m your shut from with you set you s your b and all of an electric feet. Nothing. What the hell? I guess only Fane gets something from it because he's uh, an eternal or whatever. All right, fine. Um, anything in these barrels? Anything at all? Two gold. You know what? We'll accept it. Holy hand grenade. Oh hell yeah. I wonder if there's any um. Any, uh, no, no references to, um, anything from the Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's kind of an unfortunate. 
Because, I mean, if you're going to reference the Holy Hand Grenade, then you need to uh, make more clear references to the, um, you know, to Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And we got a repair hammer that we've been looking for for quite a while. And this one, this thing looks strangely a lot like the, um, the Eternal Alloy. Maybe, let's see if that counts. It does count. That's an Eternal Alloy, apparently. Alright, good to know. Fantastic. What's in this chest? Decent amount of gold, but not much else. Sure. Eerie tablet? It seems to glow from within with a subtle light. Etched runes cover its surface. The markings feel familiar, but you have no idea what they mean. Touch it. Your fingertips burn so hot, it feels like they are melting. An energy seems to travel between the tablet and your hands, sparking knowledge directly into your mind, as if you are reading with your fingers. Electrical sensations sizzle in your mind. You understand that the runes are ancient Rivalonian, the oldest known language. You feel the fragments under your fingers, An An Lesru. You know not how, but you understand the meaning of these words with the very marrow of your being. One. One must rise. As in like one god woken? Then your fingers grow cold to the bone. Suddenly, you are just a person standing in a cavern, clinging to a stone tablet as if it were a life raft. Great. Uh, for Rosi? Uh, sorry, Fane, do you want to do the same? Your fingertips burn looking down at the tablet. You feel a connection. Then your fingers grow cold. And you got Dominate Mind, which isn't going to be very helpful at all because you don't have summoning or necromancy. Alright, so what about you guys? The tablet seems to your finger elect you then your fingers grow Nothing. Sibyl? The tablets your then Wow, okay, fine. And we can't even pick it up, so what the hell how are we supposed to do this for uh, Riker? We came across we came uh, across literally unplayable. A generous offer. Um Oh right, this is also Midnight Oil and Generous Offer, I think, are both the same quest? Alright, we should apparently keep looking. Great, what's down here? Nothing. I think we're actually ready to move on to the next area of the Black Pits, which I believe is up this path. So, let's go ahead. And let's see how quickly they move with their increased uh, running speed. Nice. I think the actual number comes down to like 25 or 30% or whatever. Who's lagging? Sabil, come on, girl. Look at her zipping in. Holy shit, that was fast. <laughs> I love it when they do that. Magisters. What's down here? Up to no good, no doubt. Ah, magisters. Why did it have to be magisters and empty crates? Except for that one. Anything? Nothing. Unbelievable. Alright, so we got a silent watcher here. With... Oh, a painting in there. Silent Watcher wearing some rather sexy armor. All red. Her face, however, a little less sexy, I gotta say. Um, weaponized Monk. White Magister. Magister Knight. Possessed Black Ring Reaver. Um, I'm assuming they're possessed by her. And I think if I recall correctly with our uh, tussle with the possessed dwarves or whatever, I think they either come to or they die? Once they are released from the possession. Okay. Let's not spoil ourselves to what's going on in there right now. Um, I don't know if we can get by without a fight. Or if we need to do a Royal Rumble. But um, here. Just in case we actually do get into a Royal Rumble. Oops. Sorry. Let me rechain you there. Uh, let's see. There we go. Alright, Losa and Fane. Why don't you guys stay up here? Fabrosi and Sabil. Fabrosi, let's get down here. Because if we're going to trigger any conversation, it should be you. Um, are they actually going to talk to you, though? Let's see if maybe we can get in close to talk to them. The Magister looks you up and down with utter dispassion. Okay, sure. So, I guess they are going to talk to us. So, Sabil, why don't you take this opportunity to get yourself over behind the Silent Watcher, who appears to be armed with uh, bows and arrows. With Sorry, with a bow and arrows. And Fane, I guess you're good to stay there. Losa, don't get um, too close to Fane, because I'm fairly certain they're going to start using uh, area of attack stuff on us. 
All right. Um, Sabil, can you actually go into hiding? Nice. All right. You should not be here. Um. Okay. Claim that you were conscripted by the magisters on the surface and sent down here to help with their efforts. Growl that you have as much right to be as anyone. If she feels otherwise, then she'd better be ready to for a fight. Bow and apologize, saying that you wandered in by mistake and became lost. You'll be on your way now. Produce Raymond's writ of passage and announce that you have every right to be here. Huh. I guess we can actually uh, get by without a fight then. All right, let's uh, show them the writ of passage. The Magister slowly shakes her head. To her, that writ might as well be your death warrant. Oh. Intruder! Oh no. I guess we are going to get into a royal rumble. Ah, damn. Um, how many enemies are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh shit. You know what? I kind of expect this fight to be pretty long-winded. So instead of going way over time, I'm actually going to cut the episode a little short, for which I apologize. But um, I don't want this episode to go on for like 15, 20 min uh, minutes longer. Because it tends to get up in there once we have like uh, lots of enemies who are around the same level. So yeah, unfortunately we're going to cut the episode off short. But um, we'll, you know, start the next episode with a... Uh, we are unfortunately going to break the combo here and we're not going to end the Royal Rumble. Uh, sorry, we're not going to end the um, episode with another Royal Rumble. But instead, we'll start the next episode with a Royal Rumble. Alright, so for now, thanks for watching and have a good breakfast.